Welcome to Talk The Line, I'm Jen Long and every week I chat to an artist or musician about their deepest passions. Sometimes it's a pretty informative chat, other times, like this week, the conversation gets a little more anecdotal. This is a podcast from The Line of Best Fit, the UK's biggest independent website for new music discovery. Look at the website at thelineofbestfit.com and you can follow us on Twitter at TalkTheLine and me at Jen Long. If you like this podcast, please subscribe this week. It's our first podcast talking to two people. Oh, wonder. Josephine van der Gucht and Anthony West released their first album as Oh, Wonder in 2014. The self-titled record was recorded at their home studio in South London and the duo released one track a month. It went on to sell more than half a million copies and marked the beginning of a mammoth touring schedule which also saw them make their TV debut on Conan in the US. This year they're back with their second album Ultra Life which Rolling Stone have called dreamy cohesiveness of the highest order. Josephine and Anthony are massively into their running and have taken part in marathons across the world. I'm chatting to them about just that on a Friday afternoon when everyone was feeling a little silly. Please be warned, this podcast contains a lot of stories about poop. Hi, oh wonder. This is like the first podcast we've done with two people. We always We're going to talk at the, at the same, same time. time. Oh, we hadn't even planned oh. that. <laughs> so cringe. Do you want to strangle us right now? Oh my God, can you do the, can you do the boy band intro? What's that? Hi. Oh, we do. Um, hey, this is Anthony and Josephine from... Oh, wonder. And you're listening to the podcast with Jen Long. What's it called? Have you got an official title? Oh, y- well, this is a pun. This oh. is a talk the line. Oh. Nice. I see what you've done there. Yeah. Walk the line. Yeah, keep going. I still don't understand. <laughs> still. Johnny Cash. Got it. Who's that? Johnny who? Yep. Okay. Um, so it's like walk the line, but we're talking. So it's like talk the line, but it's the line of best fit. Still don't get it. Oh my God, it. it's a double pun. It oh, you didn't so actually get levels. it? No, I didn't get the line of best oh, fit reference. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I thought it was just a random Johnny. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about running, not poo or puns. We, or we could talk about we poo. Could, we kind of slip a bit. Paul and running actually tie in together. They do. Paul and Radcliffe. It's a big thing. Paul and Radcliffe. Okay, let's, start, let's start with the basics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Start with, you know, why you love running, how often you run, your, you know, how you got into running, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Any, any general anecdotes, and then we'll work our way up to shitting on the street. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get there. Um, I hated running for so long. Um, school PE lessons, fifteen hundred meters round the, the track th- felt like years to me. Mm. Um, looking back, fifteen hundred meters is totally chilling. <laughs> what does it take you like <laughs> nine it's just minutes? Five k's, isn't it? <laughs> like, I think we did it in eleven minutes, which was considered slow. And uh, I just remember really resenting PE because I had to walk or run rather for eleven minutes. And then I discovered it, like, 21 at uni. So it was uni? Yeah, there was a girl at uni called Katie. She had very long limbs and she <laughs> ran everywhere. <laughs> Gangly Katie. <laughs> yeah. And everyone loved her. And sh- everyone was like, oh, Katie runs everywhere. So I was like, oh, I want everyone to love me. So I'm going to start running. No, no. Um, <laughs> I was inspired by her, though, and uh, took up running. So it was like, it wasn't a thing where it was like, okay, I don't have any money and I can't afford the gym and I need to get fit at uni because I just go out every night and drink far too much. <laughs> probably played into it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but bristol must be hard to because you were at uni in bristol and, right yeah and it must be difficult because I mean, it's, it's very hilly. hilly i think yeah that's why i've got massive calves <laughs> i just started running up well, i can see now can Whoa, I, they're bursting can I a, out those no it's, it's a horrible though look it's that big like running. oh that's not too big oh that's yeah, a good they, one though look, that's oh yeah oh like that's it's a big Guys, one, the right? listeners do, actually, do not know what you're I'm talking sorry, about. No, I, I'll describe them. <laughs> I would say that your right calf is more slender than your left calf. Which is odd. Your left calf's got, it's got a, oh, when, you do, a it that, when you do it at that angle, it's got quite a manly vibe to it. Thank you. I'm yeah. going to take that as a big compliment. Mm, you should. You know, um, you've got big calves when sometimes trousers don't go over your legs. Oh. Like, they're normally <laughs> tight around people's thighs, but mine are like, oh, you've got slender calves. I've got quite, Yeah. I didn't actually shave my legs for the last two days, though, so I apologise. But oh, yeah, that's, that's firm. <laughs> yeah. This one's... The, my, my quads are quite firm, too. Do you want to... Oh, that's a good That's a good quad. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah got, I can feel that muscle down. That's great. Squats mm. helps a lot with running. Right. Mm. Mm. So, Anthony. Yeah. Your running stories. My running stories. Should I call you Anthony Ant? Ant's Big fine. Big toned. 
Oh, don't. What's that? It's my running name. Big no. Tone. <laughs> yeah. Big Toe. No, Tone. Tone. As in Tony, as in Anton. Oh, it's Big Tone. Okay. Big Tone. BT. That's my nickname. I mean, you've got like a pizza baseball cap on. So I was getting some like, yeah. kind of like, hey, Big it, Tone. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, I'm allergic to pizza because lactose. Oh. So I just wear it. God, have wish. you had vegan pizza? Yeah. Like, but with the cheese. Oh. Yeah. It's oh, it's so bad. It's bad. So bad. Because it's not cheese. It's I don't not. know what it is. It makes me feel queasy. Yeah. Mm. It's my biggest flaw. God, sorry. I, um, I might have more flaws. <laughs> but vegan, that's another podcast coming soon. Is it? Yeah, it actually is. Danae oh. Moore's going to talk about vegan baking. Cool. Ooh. Mm. Do you ever bake with... Oh, eggs. eggs. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah, with meat. <laughs> 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 that's bacon, not baking. <laughs> Sorry, back to the running. Uh, running. I remember doing 1,500 metres at school. And I bet you were really good at it, though. No, there was this kid in my class, Chris King. His mum was called Jo. Oh, no. Uh, no. no, no, no. Yeah. That's a... With a J-O. Yeah, amazing. No, it wasn't. And he was, he was a, a big lad. <laughs> really, really big lad. Really sweet. Had the biggest smile. And the teacher, he had this thing, lads, you've got to all stick together. So we just walked it with Chris. Oh. Every time. Just got well, that's, got that's not away. running, though, is it? <laughs> it's not. No. But Chris was running. <laughs> oh, Chris! <laughs> you know. Um, so we Chris used to just hang out with him. So I didn't start running till I left school. Um, <laughs> oh God. On tour, I actually started running when I was about 18. Oh, so yeah. you were in bands before this one? Yes. Yes. Many previous lives. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, was I just found it was really... I didn't, I've never drunk on tour. So, mm. to and I was always driving. So, oh, right. Yeah get off behind the wheel and then go for a run. Because it must be quite hard to stay in shape on tour. It's Im- near impossible. Yeah. yeah. And I, I sat down a lot. Yeah. I mean, you just, you travel, you sit, you play a show, yeah. you drink too much and then yeah. you go There's to no sleep. There's no showers, like whenever you want one. Mm. Yeah. It's a bit annoying. Because mm-hmm. I have friends in bands who like will use running as a way to see the city as well as staying up in shape on tour. Because I guess, you know, you don't really... You don't get, get everyone's like, oh, you you went where? That's so glamorous! Oh my god! And you actually just see the inside of the venue in your hotel. Yeah, yeah. It's a good way of getting out and actually seeing loads of stuff quickly. Yeah, we yeah. we do run a lot on tour. Do you run together, or do you split mm, up? No, no, we don't now because we spend every other minute <laughs> of the day together. So <laughs> running what? is our escape. And you've got longer legs, Anthony. I big know tone. it's my excuse but to run. There was a period big where <laughs> big tone. <laughs> well, I was faster than you, bro. When you were running a marathon, you yeah, were faster than I'll me. That's it. That was my glory days. Yeah. Now you're just yeah. No, I'm I'm not I'm not good at the moment. Do you have like a running ritual? Do you have like a certain thing that you do to get ready before you go for a run? Do you have like do you listen to music? Do you listen to podcasts? What's your sort of like running thing? When I first ran, I didn't ever listen to music. I did like two marathons without music, which is I find weird. that really because wow. you've run a marathon, right? One, right, first and last. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you came first and last. <laughs> 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 oh no! Did it? Which put you one off? was it? Oh, I did the London Marathon oh, in 2015. Wicked. Did you? Yeah. Which marathons have you run? You've done. I London. did London in 2013. Okay. Um, and I did Berlin and Stockholm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, both without music. I fi- did really you listen to music? Yes, I had a playlist. I had my iPod. 2015. Oh, oh retro. Times have changed. I know. I listened, I made a playlist in advance and I had um, some Circa Waves on there. Nice, nice. nice. And some Haim and some nice. Taylor Swift, I think. Great. This is 2015, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Retro. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I had like an emergency playlist because I think they, when when you run a marathon, they always say like, oh, you need to listen to the, especially somewhere like London, mm. everyone comes out to watch. And so many of my friends that had run it before were like, don't listen to music because the crowds are so amazing and they'll cheer you on and they'll be like, come on, Jen, get those knees up, you know, and you want it, you need that motivation. So I had an emergency playlist. See, a lot of people told me that. And so I had the music <laughs> down a little bit low and it. I was like ready to just pop an, a, a, an earphone out or something. But it is quite vibey. And then you hit the Isle of Dogs. Yeah. The Isle of Dogs. Yeah. What is and that? And it is grey mm. and deserted mm. and you're miserable and just it's just building sites you're just like where are we there's yeah. nothing here and I think if I hadn't had something to distract me during the Isle of Dogs <laughs> I think I would have just given up 
I um I got tripped over at the Isle of Dogs for my know. London Marathon. What happened? I was there. I know. I was it like, was she's feeling a bit slow. She hasn't come around the corner. Very traumatic, actually. Fell over. I think, I mean, I say I got tripped up. I fell over. Vicious attack. And uh, no, no one stopped to help me. No. I know. At least it's in keeping with London. Because I was running... In no keeping with London, you yeah, know, no one helps anyone. Um, <laughs> that's true. Um, I think it's because I was running like near one of the, the pace make. Are they what they call oh, pace yeah, makers? Yeah, that's yeah. I think they're pace, 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 pace setters, pacers, pacers. So that they're like the people who have. Also, I find it so strange that they can do this, but they have like a, a sign yeah. with the time on their backs, and you follow that if you want to make that time. It's amazing. How do they know how fast to run? It's bizarre. Yeah. How oh, they're do pacers. they do it? It's built into their system. Yeah, but I'd that's mad. Like, how do you maintain and the the exact correct pace mm. for like twenty six point two miles? Mm. It's amazing. So I've actually read a book by a guy who was a pacer. No way. So they always, obviously, for, for for them, like I was, I was trying to run a sub four. So whoever was the pacer at that mark would have easily been able to do like a two hour twenty marathon. Yeah. So for them, it's like a little jog. No. So how many have you? You've done one. I've only done one. You've only done one. Yeah. I've only done one. You've done two. I've done two. You've done two. Okay. But um, so what were your times? Oh, that's sort of point. First was three fifty seven. In, wow. in Berlin. Four, man. Wow. But Berlin's really flat. Mm. Yeah. And and at the end, when you're on like 25 miles, there's like beer signs. I was like, no, they can't be giving me beer at the end. They come up to you with a massive, like that, massive tank of the beer. So I am Gen drinking on the job. Is pissed. Uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's not oh pissed God. yet. She's only halfway through. It's giant. Yeah, they just <laughs> shove a load of beer in you. Wow. It's bizarre. When in Berlin? Like pre-finish line. No. no, 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 like you finish and then there was this huge, like, oh, everyone amazing. just stops and like, oh, starts aching and they just fill you with beer. See, oh, I, had a, I had a beer after I ran the marathon. That was like, I mean, I had How some water, but, it, then, yeah. <laughs> but then, but then, yeah, the first thing I had was a beer. Really? Yeah. Because I was oh, just like, good. fuck it, I've run a marathon. I mean, yeah. the calories don't count. Do they? I went oh, straight to McDonald's and hailed some chips. <laughs> it was incredible. Did you, you, did you run it for a charity or? I did, yeah. Do they not feed you after? Um, well, I, I had a marathon party at my house, so I was like, been off the charity party. <laughs> wow. I raised some money. I raised, I raised them loads of money. Um, you did raise a lot. Who I did raised, you run for? Um, Parkinson's. Oh, wow, yeah. My granddad has Parkinson's. And um, uh, yeah, it was actually me and my grandparents that were doing the whole campaign. We raised £7,777. That's massive. It's amazing. So good. Well, well done. So I binned off the party. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And then I went and had a massive party of my own. But I ate loads of McDonald's chips. Because you crave salt, don't you? Did you finish? Yeah. Were you, like, covered in salt? It wasn't too hot the day I... The ah. one I ran, it wasn't too sweaty. Um, it was, like, quite grey, cold. Like, my friends were freezing, waiting, oh, waiting to watch me pass. And I'm, like, there just in my, like, vest, like, hiya! You know? <laughs> so hot! It's going to go into these showers. <laughs> so what did you do yours in? Uh, I, ju- I just did it in, like, I was doing it for WizKids. Oh, cool. And so I did it in like one of those uh, little vests. little charity vests they did give you. Did you have your name on it? It did, yes, because that's one of the things they tell you is make yeah. sure you get your name printed on your vest. Then so everyone cheers. Can be like, Come on, Jen. Yeah. It was quite funny, actually, because I was running along and there was someone like stood by the, the sidelines going like, go on, Big Tone. Go on, <laughs> Joe. Go on, Jen. Oh, Jen. And it was oh. my friend Rachel McWinnie from University slash Moshi Moshi. No way. Way. Aww. Oh, did you stop and have a chat? No, I didn't. I didn't stop. I didn't stop running. I ran the whole thing. I stop. I did sort of pause to hug two different friends. Right, right. But they were the kind of friends that would be okay with my sweaty armpits nice. engulfing them. Yeah. Nice. Did you? Did you run the whole? Ran the whole. Well, apart from when I got tripped up and I stopped for about fifteen seconds. Oh, I thought you said it was five minutes, which is why it affected your time. No, 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 it's because I... That's weird. Yeah, Oh, well, my God, look, mm. competitive. Damn it. No, so wait, you're 3.57. Because that was the then first Stockholm. The first one he did. Three. No, it was earlier than that. Was it? It was closer to like three and a half, I think. Your next one. The yeah. second one is easier. It's like childbirth, essentially. Uh, is it actually? Speaking from experience. <laughs> Speaking from experience. <laughs> I think, yeah, because your body obviously goes through men, like mad pain. So and the second time, your muscles are kind of like, oh. What was the distance, what amount of time did you leave between doing the two marathons? It was about a year. Right, okay. Um, oh, that's, that's a good amount of time because I don't know about you. 2015, you ran it. So you've had a couple of years yeah. to stop running. I mean, I'm never doing another one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never did doing another one. Did you enjoy it? Um, the, the start, yes. 
Mm. <laughs> Do you know what it was? I think the thing that I didn't prepare for that really fucked me was I they had like a big team charity photo thing at 8 a.m. in the park in Greenwich. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, didn't know that. So don't I got that. up at like no. half five or something oh, like that. Oh, you need all the energy you can get, man. I got up early and I had like, I had my like little like, so, so when you're training, I don't know if they, they, you did this, but I like went to like a training day to learn how to train for the marathon. Yeah. And it was, they were like once a week you do a big run. Yeah. So like Sunday, Sunday mornings were my, my big run day. And then the rest of the week, you just do like nothing more than six miles, I think, mm. um, just twice a week. So it's actually not too much running. It's not as much as I thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, so every Sunday morning, I would get up and have like a bowl of cereal, a bit of toast, have a coffee. And then I would wait till I'd done my pre-run poo. Yeah. And then I was like, good to go. PRP. Uh, PRP. Uh, and, and, and that was like my, my ritual. So the morning of the marathon, I got up at like half five and I had my cereal, oh, my toast, no. my coffee. I had a poo and then I went over to the park and then I did like three more poos because I was really nervous and yeah. I wanted to get it all out. <laughs> my like, my like f- fear was that halfway round I was going to... Pull a Radcliffe. No, just like ha- need a poo and have to stop and like, yeah, and then time. be in like a line for the toilet yeah. and then it would ruin yeah. my time and I'd have stopped and then... Were you know. aiming for a specific time? No, just finishing. But right. but I just wanted to do as good as of I course, could. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. Just, you know, self-competitive or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, by the time we start, you start running. It's like gone ten. Yeah, and so you I had been hungry for like again. five no, hours or something. Oh no, that which was so dumb. No. So by the time I got to about, and I was fine up until about mile sixteen, and I started to get so hungry. hungry. And they don't feed you stuff. No, did you not have pasta or anything in the morning? Not in the morning. Ooh, Do you have no, pasta in the morning? I mean, I had night like before. I mean, I was I carb loading the whole week, yeah. which is yeah. my favourite bit of the marathon. For the whole six months prior to the marathon, <laughs> I was like, boom, let's go. I'm eating for two. I had for loads two. of pasta on the day Did in I Berlin. I, yeah. oh, I should have I should have eaten like an hour or an hour before we, before I ran. Yeah. But I was just so, in my head, I was so worried about the poo. and. They and say like, literally eat as much as you can. Like yeah. So yeah. this backfired on me. So I've got an, uh, the reverse story. Oh no. Which is, so I don't know if you did this, but I did like a half marathon within my training. So I trained for like six months and then yeah. I did a half marathon, which they said is a good pra- practice. So, you know, get the experience of a race, but mm. also then you double your half marathon time and add 20 minutes and that's supposed to be your marathon time. Oh really? So you can like work out how to pace. Okay, so yeah, that's about fair. Yeah, so yeah. me and my friends went to Paris on a weekend. And, uh, I ran it with one of my friends, um, Pascal, and my other friend came for support. And maybe on the Wednesday, so the, the race was on the Sunday morning. So on the Wednesday, I was like, boom, I'm going to start carb loading. Got five days. Brilliant. So I ate so for much. Half. Yeah, for a half. Taking it seriously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Taking the food part very yeah. seriously. So I think like Wednesday, Thursday night in London, I ate like loads of pasta. You know, as you're supposed to do Friday. Between Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I still hadn't gone to the toilet. <gasps> oh, no. You're not so we very arrived, good at I'm anyway. not very good at that anyway. But arrive in Paris on Saturday morning. With two days of pasta in Wait, me. Wait, why are you not very good at going to the Oh, I, my, my body doesn't like processing food. food. It just holds on to it for a really? long time. It's travelling. Wait, how often do you poo? Mm, not not as often as I should. I mean, really? I don't know what's normal. You, but sometimes you just constantly look I can go for like pregnant. a week. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah, it's really, what? really awful. Because planes, I don't know if you... So, there's, oh, I've got so many theories about this. It's only started since we've been touring. But right. they put food in stuff in plain food that makes you not poo. Otherwise Here's a question for you, Jen Long. Have you ever pooed on a plane? Yes. Oh. Yes. I pooed it's everywhere. <laughs> okay. Are I you pooing have. right now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so frequent. What? Yeah, like oh, so three jealous. a day at least. No, 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 no. Whoa. I yeah. don't know who's got the biggest issue here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you both need some doctors immediately. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh no, my body, I get... I get like anxiety now because I just, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going on a plane. And then anyway, so I was in Paris, Saturday morning, hadn't pooed. I was like, it's all right, it's all going to come out. Obviously you're in France. I ate so many baguettes, so many pastries. I remember I like ate half of just a baguette with like cheese in it. Um, We then went out for lunch and I had, I remember having pasta. Then we went out for dinner and I was like, pasta again, boom. So I've had like three full days of like, amazing if someone sliced you open you'd be I'd, delicious i'd be amazing oh, yeah, yeah very delicious but then it got to like seven o'clock that night and we were kind of back at the apartment and um emily was like jose you haven't pooed 
in a while. Like, I love the way that she knows. Yeah, well, because I was very aware of <laughs> what it. Did I was she like, know? It's like I'm very full. There's a lot of food in me. Were you bloated? Very bloated. Oh. And she was like, I'm, I've got the solution prunes. Okay, yeah, Kay. high in fiber. Did she mean went poo? high in fiber? So, went to the local French supermarché, got a kilogram of prunes, and I oh ate <laughs> half the bag. So, I ate half a kilogram of prunes. <laughs> That's a pr- I was like, this is it, guys. It's going to happen. Nothing happens. So I was like, it's fine. I'll wake up tomorrow and it's going to come pouring out. Just have polos. They've got laxative. No, they effects. don't. They do. Coffee's How? good. Yeah, coffee. Okay, guys. Have a few espressos. You're helpful now. <laughs> <laughs> Just a future Cheers. reference. Yeah. Wake up Sunday morning. Bearing in mind, I haven't pooed since Wednesday. And I've got, th- what's this now? Four Wait, days. What day did you wake up? Sunday, Sunday morning. Race, ra- morning the oh. race. I've now got half a kilogram of prunes. Three meals of pasta from the day before, a whole baguette. You could feed a small country. Yeah, I really could. <laughs> and then it was kind of that awkward conversation in the morning, like seven o'clock, when it was like, okay, so I haven't pooed and I can't poo, but I need to eat breakfast. So then I was eating more porridge on Sunday <laughs> you morning. Eat more? Why did you eat? Because you have to fuel your body. <laughs> it's fully fueled. You've got a full tank of it's gas. It's a half marathon. <laughs> <laughs> You could probably do 13 miles right now. Probably. I ran, I ran the half marathon. I did very well. It was great. I felt, I felt amazing. Finished. Went out. Had a massive meal again oh Sunday night. God. Still nothing. Guys, it was Monday morning, London Bridge Station. <laughs> and my body went, now is the time. And I was like, <gasps> hitting me. Oh, I man. just had a great time at London Bridge Station on Monday morning. Were there public toilets there? Yeah. On okay. platform it was that day they closed the toilets. Five <laughs> days worth of carbs just came oh out of me. God. It was amazing. I was like, day too late. Day too late, body. Come on. So now I... Um, Drink coffee. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. That's my awful poo story. <laughs> So I can't eat prunes. What we were talking about before. What was running? Running, running <laughs> I think. <laughs> I mean, that was a loose, loosely related yeah, anecdote. I mean, yeah. Bad. Um, Sorry. Wait, so London Marathon. This was, was in training for the London Marathon. Yeah. Did you? You did, did a you, lot of training. You yeah. were hardcore. I was. I was a bit. I went. Went for it. What One distance did, did you run up to? I did three twenty-two miles. That's crazy. Wow, three. I did two. Yeah, yeah. I didn't which, do any. Which a lot of people on the day are chatting, and you're like, "So, what's the furthest you've run?" One woman was like, "Oh, I've done 30. And I was like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> you are you in for down. a surprise." Yeah. yeah. Well, I think a lot of people run the half and then walk. Yeah. Oh, really? Or like, yeah. They call them the sweepers. The people at the end who just get swept up by the. Is it? Yeah. Well, you, well, you, well so you, it's seven hours, I think, the London one, anyway. It's the like yeah, it's set cut off. cut off time is seven hours. The guy that did it in that diving suit. Did you oh, remember yeah. him? Well, that's the thing. You. I took him days. If the if the like if the car passes you, you have to move up onto the pavement. So you can still no way. keep going, but you just have to do it on the pavement because the year I ran, there was like this. I think she was eighty six. Mm. Eighty six year old woman ran for the same charity as me, and she was the oldest person that year running wow. the London 86. Marathon. Eighty six. Yeah, and I think she did it in like nine and a half hours, something like that. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. What was it? wait? So you were three hours. Something forty something. Forty something. I feel like it's thirty seven, three thirty seven. What was That's your training plan, Big Tone? Um <laughs> not tone. too much training <laughs> was my training plan. I did you were do you have like a runner's out, physique or something? Uh, you what, like sorry? Are you like a natural runner? Yeah, I, I tend to be able to just keep fit quite easily. But I went on a lad's holiday. I hate you. Sorry. <laughs> a week before the marathon. <laughs> oh. The second marathon, I went on a lad's holiday. Which was just us on a boat for, yeah, like eight nights. Oh my god! And I got drunk every night. Obviously, no so you to run. The marathon. No, no. Oh, Two okay. days after I got back was the marathon. Oh god! So I'd had, I just obliterated my body with booze, <sighs> and no running. And I was like, I might not even do it. I'm just gonna go to Stockholm and just chill. And then I just smashed it. I don't know how. I don't know. How. Honestly, don't know how. That pianos saved me. Pasta. Pasta. See, I've I've got friends who like did a marathon and like loved the high so much that they just keep going back and doing them again yeah. and again and again, and it feels like the training starts to descend because I guess your body's so used yeah. to it that they can just like my friend Ali. He said this is, it was like best marathon, his best time. He was in New York, and the night before he just completely ended up like eating pizza and drinking beers and like and then and then ran his best marathon. Yeah, I think your body probably gets used to it. 
it's like um, who is it? Eddie? Is it Eddie? Eddie Azard, Azard yeah. That did like a marathon a day three, for three weeks. Right. But then he had to keep three, doing them to like unwind down. I think. Yeah. Because you can't just stress stop. on your body. Yeah. Oh. That's why it's bad to stop. Right at the end of a marathon. You know when you cross the line, all you want to do is just be like, ugh. That's what yeah, I do. Yeah. My legs seize up. Oh, yeah. oh my God. You have I to burst into cool tears. Down. Oh, did you? I, like, yeah. like, like jubilation? No, I did just oh. tears. <laughs> just, just horrible. <laughs> oh my God. I think I was just, just drained. Just so completely done. And I like, the last three miles were a nightmare. It was, even though I'd done like two 22s in training. Last one. Oh my god, yeah, the last nothing three prepares miles. You, for that. It's horrible. you know when you're really hung over and you're like, I cannot bear to like even listen to music, right? Like I just need s- silence, mm. you know? And I was like running, I just took my headphones out and I was just running really close to the barrier, just eyeballing people in the crowd. <laughs> so they would go, Go on, Jen. And I'd be like, you okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would like stare at someone else and they'd be like, Go on, Jen. And I was like, Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And I got down to, um, and they had the things 800 meters, and you're like, oh, 600 meters. And I got Feels down so long, to Buckingham Palace and like turned that corner and saw the finish line. Did you sprint? Burst into tears. Oh. Burst into tears. I was running like, <laughs> and then they have this thing at the London Marathon that's like hand in hand. Like, I don't know if they had it your year. No. My year, you were supposed to cross the line hand in with hand a with stranger. someone. With a, yeah, a it was like, it's like that's a bit weird. I think it? it was like an anniversary of like the first ever London Marathon where the winners had crossed the line together hand in hand. Or oh, something, well, I've actually read about that. Something like that. Yeah. Right. And so Who I'm running along and I'm like, <laughs> and I, I, I looked over my left shoulder and there's this guy kind of like sprinting up from behind and I reach out my hand and he just fucking sprinted straight <laughs> past me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Then. No, and then I looked over my right shoulder and there was this lady and I held out my hand and she like ran up and we... Was I it d- the 86 year old woman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd realise you've done it in nine and a half hours. And I was like, where is everyone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't know who she was, but we crossed the line and oh, we hugged cool. each other and then I never saw her again. Oh. And then they put my medal on me and I burst into tears again. Oh. And then this guy kind of like, who he was running for the same charity, came up and befriended me and was like, is it your first marathon? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he like helped me unwrap my big silver thing. Yeah. And I was like, thank you. And he was That's just That's when like, you know you've done a marathon when you get like that foil. Foil blanket. Yeah. So good. What do you think, why did you do two? Is it is it like the kind of like the tension you get, the high? Because it, it is a high when you finished yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I think it's because they were spaced enough apart that you forgot about the first one. The second one didn't hurt. Do you remember? We yeah. walked... 30 miles the next day? Yeah, you're mental. Oh my God. It just doesn't hurt as much, honestly. It's really I couldn't weird. Go, I couldn't walk downstairs the next day. I mean, after my first one, it was crazy. It's insane. Maybe insane. we should run a second marathon. Absolutely no. <laughs> <laughs> that was contenting hand nodding, in hand. right? <laughs> no way in hell. Um, not unless someone listening to this wants to give like 10 grand to a charity of our choice. Then I'll consider it. Oh. That's... Why are you looking... Oh, I'm not <laughs> 10 grand. <laughs> To anyone. Let me just get my credit card. We should scheme. Donate to make Jen Long run a marathon and she doesn't want to run. I think people would pay to Donate see that. Donate for hate. So what, you're th- what you're saying is you think that people would pay to see me in abject misery, pain <laughs> and Abs. disillusion. I mean, I'm investing. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, we, yeah, do it for Parkinson's. If you can raise 10 grand, I'll, I'll, run, a, I'll run a marathon. Sick. All right, I'm on it. Okay. Mission. Boom. You're going to regret saying that. I'm so going to regret saying compe- that. Competitive. Yeah. Challenge accepted. Um, the oh my worst God, crying. I'm going to look on Twitter tomorrow and there's going to be a fucking just giving page. Oh, yeah. It? 60 grand. <laughs> <laughs> oh that means God, you have to six do marathons. six marathons. <laughs> exactly. Fuck oh. off. <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon you'll never do one? Well, did you just not enjoy it? Um... Or you feel like, well, do you know crying. what? Was it like a bucket list thing? It's like tick, I've It was done a it. bucket list thing. I right. made a list of things that I had to do, I wanted to do in my life when I was like, 13, 14, something like that, and yeah. run a marathon was on there. So I always okay. wanted to do it. What else is on there that you've ticked off then? Go skydiving. Done that? Never gonna happen. <laughs> Go bungee jumping. Oh, Never oh gonna bungee jumping is scary. <laughs> Hold a tarantula. <laughs> Never gonna happen. What a thrill seeking teenager you are. Dive it. I think my goals are like find someone to kiss me, stuff like that. Still Yours looking. is like hold a tarantula. I don't know which is weirder. You could raise money to try to find someone to kiss you. Still looking, guys. Still waiting. Justgiving.com. <laughs> yeah.
Um, have you heard about Ben Gibbard? You know Ben Gibbard from oh, Death, from Death Cab? Cab for Kiwi. He is an ultra marathon runner now. No, oh, like okay, so this is weird. Yeah, hardcore. ultra marathon. Has is he has he gotten really skinny or something? He's tiny. Mm. He's yeah. Really? He just got really he used to, That's what I kind of liked about him. He had like too. a like cheeky face. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, he was very cute. He is he really? Podgy. Is he like? Is he scary skinny? Gaunt. No, he, you, you you could tell he runs marathons. He's like wow. hardcore, really slim, and runs them all the time every week. That's mental. Because cr- ultra marathon is like forty miles up. Oh, he does like 120. Something like <gasps> Whoa. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a guy called, is it Scott Jurek? Scott Jurek, yeah. He has a great book called Eat and Run. He's a vegan. Okay. Um, and so half the book's about how, because obviously like he said that he's experienced so much, um, what's the word? Like, what's the word? Not sl- Is it slack? Um, <laughs> he's written a book about about all the um, the hate he, he used to get or like people used to take the piss out of him. being like Flack. Flack. And it's funny yes. because you're about to talk about seeds. Flax. Oh, nice. <gasps> it's close. Nice. Sad time, lucky. It's not a pun, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Damn it. Um, Scott Jurek wrote an amazing book called Eat and Run, which is about um, all the flack he used to get as a vegan and a runner. People used to be like, how can you um, nourish your body with like seeds and nuts and stuff and run like he runs ultra marathons, like 120 miles, 150 yeah. miles on... Nuts and seeds, literally. He, d- he does them in Death Valley. Oh, the oh have place you heard about the Death Valley one? No, Death Valley to me is just like that Sonic Youth song with Media yeah. Lunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's um, I'm so indie. Is it in <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Nevada? It's in, I've been. It's very hot. Yeah. It's so hot. hot they have signs being like, no Stay walking in your cars, allowed. yeah. Wow. Like you can't walk, because it's, how hot is it? I don't want to say. 50 degrees. Oh, it's over 50 degrees. You is can't it? walk. Or exist in it. So he runs in it. People run. People die doing it. Which is yeah, they do die doing it. Marathon. See, this is the thing. What I I always think like it's it's good training for or just going running in the UK mm. because we have like quite a temperate climate. You know, it's I mean it's generally yeah. like a bit muggy. Yeah, just like raining a bit. Perfect. It's perfect yeah. running yeah. weather. Like it's just cool. A bit of rain is quite euphoric. Oh, actually, I isn't really it? like it. Yeah. And I really like it when you're running and it's raining and you see someone else who's out running in the yeah. rain. <sighs> And you f- like have a little like. Have you ever done a high five to another runner? Um, only my friend Mike Ajahi, who ran the London Marathon last year, and I was out running, and he was training, and we high fived, oh, nice. uh, uh, running around Victoria Park. Oh, so nice! Have you done one? Um, someone's done one to me, and I've been I've been trying to pluck up the courage in the last two years since to high five someone. Where else. was it? It's in Greenwich Park. Really? This guy was su- having such a great time. And he just high fived me, and I was like, "Yes, this is amazing! I'm invincible!" Oh, and that's uh, good. It does, yeah, because it it's that awkward moment when you're crossing a runner in the park, isn't it? Do mm. you smile? Do yeah. you look down? Right. No. Some people no. look say down. Uh-uh. No, don't because say hi. It's London. But then, whenever I go and like visit my parents in West Wales, and I go for a run, it uh, it, it takes me like I have to readjust because I'll be like out running. And then I'll run past someone and they'll be like, morning. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Why are you talking Stranger. to me? <laughs> yeah, Stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. That must be beautiful running in West Wales, though. It, it's hilly, but mm. it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Mm, What's so your nice. best ever run? Do you have like a run where you're like, oh, oh that, was a, that was a good one? I did Red Rocks in California, uh, not California, Colorado. Oh, you know wow. that big amphitheater? Have you seen it? No, no. Um, there was a U2 documentary there years ago. Oh, okay. It was like, Amazing, probably one of the best shows I've played. And these huge rocks that you can just just go for hikes on for miles and miles and miles. Do you like a hilly run then? Yeah, I like um, trail running. Oh, I've okay. really got into trail running in America. There's so many trail runs. It's amazing. That's what Ben Gibber does. He does like hundred mile trail runs. Wow. You can do them around Big Sur, and yeah, it's amazing. That's quite a good way of like seeing seeing nature. Yeah, mm. America's seeing full of full of amazing trails. But then what I was saying before is like, how do people, like whenever I've been at South by Southwest, for example, and you're like getting up in the morning and, or like going home and there's people <laughs> out running and it's like really hot. Yeah. Like it's like, it's like boiling. boiling. Yeah. And this is for you. This is like not even that hot because this is like March. Mm-mm-mm. So like, do they still go running? Like when do people run or go running if they live in like California or Texas or somewhere like that or yeah. Spain? When yeah. it's like, when it's get, when it's like summer, it'd be horrible. The chafing, can My you imagine? Auntie ran the Nairobi marathon for like five years straight. What? Whoa! Yeah. She 
She's a peacekeeper in Nairobi, and wow. she did like fundraising to run marathons. Crazy. Whoa. You've met her, haven't you? She's an incredible woman. Yeah. So was she like your inspiration to do to do marathons? Actually, yeah, I did used to go running with her when I was like ten in Ireland. Mm. Oh, yeah, she's pretty cool. Cool lady. Yeah, she's a lady that you meet, and you you kind of get the sense that she probably runs marathons because you know that she's kind so of person. Focused, yeah. She's very cool. Is she sinewy though? I always feel like if you, is she old actually? I just presume that she was like auntie. <laughs> I just presume she was like in her like sixties or something. She's in her forties, beautiful, 40s, yeah. oh, okay. very slender and yeah, she's a runner, which is very cool. Because you know sometimes when you see like older people who are like definitely been runners and it kind of like the muscles kind of go a bit Madonna. Yeah, oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a look. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you're supposed to get really lean and shredded when you run. But I didn't realise the calves. I don't have that calf thing though. Uh, I think it's just you. Mm. Mighty calves. Do you cycle? Hell no. No, I Oh my god, you like should cycling. see Joe's feet on a bike. It's so I'd scary. love to do triathlon, but bikes and swimming scare the <laughs> crap out of me. Do, <laughs> do you not swim? Oh no. I learned to swim when I was about fifteen. Yeah. Um, very late, and I can only wear goggles. I have to wear like armbands. I don't like it. It's I can't do, do the head head I can't do the face in water thing. No, yeah. like in the shower even. I'm like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Got don't really wash up my face. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like front crawl, <gasps> but Whoa. with my like face to the Permanently side. Out. Like it never go. My face never goes in the water. I and know. I was yeah. So uncomfortable. And I got like sassed when I was in Australia because you know they all you they what? were just sassed. What was that? You know, someone was like how do you swim with like your face not <laughs> underwater kind of thing? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like using the word sass as a verb. Oh, okay. Sassed. Well, how would you normally use it? Oh, I suppose. I use it as like, oh, that girl's got sass. Oh, uh, very sassy. To give sass. Yeah. Nice. Oh, okay. Learn something every day. <laughs> What's your worst run? Worst run. Oh my God, I know exactly what my worst oh, run was. Oh no, Emma's got one in oh, it. Oh God. Oh, go on. So I used to work um, just down the road from here in the T building. Mm. In, oh yeah. We're in Shoreditch right now. And I live in Leighton and it's about, it's about six miles okay. to get into Shoreditch from, from, from my house. And so if you can either sit on the bus for like an hour or you can run in and it takes like about an hour and you get your yeah. like workout for the day done. Yeah. So I was running in quite a lot because there were showers in the building. So I could like run in, shower in the office by nine. Perfect. And one morning I started running in and <laughs> just going back to the poo. But <laughs> oh, oh no. my God, oh no. I needed one so badly. And it was like stomach churning painful. Oh. And I like even went into Victoria Park to see if the, because they have like public toilets in yeah. there, but it's so early in the morning they weren't open. What did you do? Oh, I just, I just ran and ho no, I, I managed to hold it. And Ooh. then I, and I got in and then the, all the, the shower cubicles were full <laughs> and I just had to stand there like need, oh my God. Like, you know, when you're like, I think it's coming out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh. And why is it when you're in the vicinity of a toilet that your body's like, I'm ready, open I the door, know. let's what go. is that? It's so annoying. And Do you like, get that oh, as a man? Yeah, it's the smell. It's, like it's the wings. smell? Well, you just, you're like, oh, it's a toilet. And then you just need it. <laughs> it's a thing. Like, it's like the like downstairs version of Pavlov's dog. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I feel like when you were like, let's talk about running and marathons. I didn't I didn't actually think that we were going to ring it like this? But there's so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. Um, like like tips maybe if like people mm. are, are listening and because one thing that um, I was talking to someone about recently was about marathons and someone was like, oh, and like I uh, I really wanted to do a marathon and I started running and started training and I got shin splints. And it's because like they they'd never run before. So yeah. shin splints is actually a lot to do with your trainers. Yeah. Yeah. So I started training. So I went from an like a non runner to just being like I'm gonna run a really fast marathon, and just went for it. Wait. And so what was the from being a non runner to running the marathon? What's the time? Oh, like a year and a bit, maybe from like doing my first ever like you five running big distances like straight run. away. I'd Wait. I thought you started running at uni. Yeah, but only like 20 minutes. Right, okay. And then yeah, I just yeah, went, yeah. actually, like maybe it was a year before the marathon, I was like, I'm going to run a marathon. 
Wow. Um, but so I started running, got terrible shin splints, Oof. went to see like one of those running specialist people. Mm. Um, and they said, it's all in your trainer. Swap the trainer. So you know you can go to those shops. Oh, and I do you, that. You run on the treadmill and Always. they analyse your gait. Because it's like, it's really bad for you, isn't it? Yeah. Like r- oh, running yeah, on the running road is terrible, terrible for, you. for you. Yeah, apparently um, running a marathon takes uh, something like seven years off your life. No, 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 each marathon's a year. Each marathon's a year. Yeah. Okay, Smoking is seven cool. years. Oh. E- yeah. Each cigarette. No, no, no. Living cigarette. in London is seven years, I feel like. Oh, that's it. Yeah, pollution. Which is awesome. So, so running, running around London and is... Didn't want to be 100 London anyway. And smoking. <laughs> you want to be that... 80, you've got to beat the 86-year-old, though. Oh, she think. survived. She was running in London. Yeah, she boom. She did all right. God. Um, so right. tips for, for marathons. So, but the, the, the trainer thing... The Get running on a treadmill. Spend over a hundred pounds on trainers if, if you, you can. can yeah. It sounds obscene, but I think it will save your legs. Someone told me that you only had like 150 miles in a pair of trainers. And yeah, then you needed to especially them. training and yeah. one marathon is well, like a pair of shoes. I took my because I did like a I'd done like a bunch of training and I'd done like a half and I took my trainers to the running shop and the guy was like, "That's not true." Oh, I was oh like, really? Fine. Oh, the myth they tell you. But like, I feel like he was telling the truth because I was like, they're ready to buy a pair of trainers. Yeah. (laughs) Take my money. Really, like, (laughs) crazy. Yeah, logic. Otherwise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I also have. I forgot. I've just remembered this. The most embarrassing story of my life is associated with running. Please do tell. Is this worse than the prune story? (laughs) It's. I mean, that wasn't even embarrassing. That was. Is that too bad? I'll leave that. Oh. It's pretty bad. What is it? I'll give you the brief version. Oh, if no. you use nice words for certain words. So <laughs> I just done, as we were talking about, one of the 22 mile mar- uh, training runs and my legs were very sore. So my mum was like, why don't you go and get like a sports massage? It's like, brilliant. Booked in at the local physio clinic in Greenwich, went down. This very handsome six foot three athletic black man with huge muscles, beautiful, very handsome was like, hello, I'm your masseuse. I was like, boom, this is great. He was like, come down into the uh, the room. I'm just going to leave you if you'd just like to get under that towel. I was like, sure. Sports massage, right? Mm-hmm. For some reason, something went through me. Not anything to do with the fact that he was very handsome, but um, <laughs> genuinely. But I was like, great, I'll just take all my clothes off and get under this towel. Yeah. Right, you say yeah. If it's a, apparently a physio... When I say all my clothes... When I say all my clothes, I mean like I took even my pants off and oh, stuff. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. no. Right. Not, no, not That's not a massage. <laughs> didn't, didn't realise that, right? So, and apparently like physio, you can wear a tracksuit because it's not really about really? massage. It's no, like more. That was one thing that I did when I was, when I was running, when I was training for the marathon is mm. I got a sports massage every two weeks. Oh, did you, what did you wear? Did I, I, just bra pants and bras. Yeah, like yeah right, should have done that. So I took everything off. I don't, I really don't know why in hindsight. I think I was just very tired and got under this towel and then um, Leon came back into the room and obviously started like massaging my calves, my big calves. Were you at any point like, he's going to start? Yeah, and then it's kind of, it kind of slowly dawned on me. It's like, shit, I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> and it was that kind of awkward point where it's like, I can't admit that because I, that's just going to be embarrassing for the next 59 minutes. So I kind of endured the calf thing. And then obviously he got further up my leg and was doing this like move where it was like putting my, my leg behind my head to try and stretch out my hamstrings. And his head was just fully up in my vag, like fully there. <laughs> and the poor guy was like trying to not to look and then was making small talk. He was like, so... Whilst he was down there. <laughs> yeah, it was so <laughs> good. So we enjoyed a whole Watch EastEnders last night. Yeah. <laughs> Never been back. They keep sending me 50% off vouchers for my birthday, but I can't even bring myself. He, he probably like left the next day. Yeah. Like, he's probably gone into a different job. So here's a pro tip. If you're going to get a sports massage, leave your underwear on. Did you get a happy ending though? No. <laughs> I wish I did. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> happy ending for a woman? Yeah. Boom. Uh, we can do it too, yeah? <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Might be a masseur. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> oh. So, so that's um, that's probably one of the worst moments I had training. Oh God. I have a massage story, but it's got nothing to do with running. But I basically just got groped by a seventy-year-old who t- told me to take my clothes off in Budapest. Yeah, that's just abuse. <laughs> and he just did a full reach round, no towel, nothing. He he was topless. <laughs> what? Are you, no, are you taking this moment to tell us that you, <laughs> yeah. you've been taken advantage of? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not funny. Um, this is no longer yeah, funny. Yeah, he took, took his top off and was like, sit down. I was like, yeah. And then he hung my pants up. <laughs> and I came out. It was an amazing massage. It's a big muscle, your bum. Did you get a happy ending? He was happy. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. Oh. But you just used uh, the term reach around. Yeah, I've never heard that. Full reach around. I'm not getting it. No. But uh, my friend was getting one at the same time. I was like, wasn't that an amazing, like, Hungarian massage? He was like, honestly, it was crap. He just, like, touched my leg for a bit. My guy fully groped me. <laughs> Wish oh. I got his number. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's I feel like we've, like, naturally come to the end of our... On that yeah. note. On that note. <laughs> Sad note. We've basically just spoken about poo and yeah, I don't know inappropriate reach rounds. Really, we haven't given anyone any, ti- any tips. Um, I think we should give some, some, some words of wisdom. Yeah. As when you know, professional runners that yeah. we are. Mm-mm-mm. Just do it. That's already been taken as a slogan. <laughs> oh. I think. I think trainers, if, you, if you're going to go <laughs> in for it. Yeah. Not practical work shoes. Wear trainers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Toe capped. <laughs> Just caterpillars don't, don't buy like don't buy like a 30 pound pair of nikes no. from sports direct yeah you gotta yeah. get like proper and running the worse shoes. they look the better they are yeah that's yeah. the thing don't go yeah. fashion no yeah. don't don't buy fashionable running gear because it's probably not as good as the uh the weird Brooks. go, go to the go to runner's needs or somewhere like that runner's go needs. on the treadmill yeah go on the treadmill they'll take weird videos of you mm-hmm. it'll be fine and um find what makes you feel good because i think running is like one of the very few things in life that remains that's very meditative and very like self-indulgent in a very empowering way like it's it's so rare that you can do an activity and be completely on your own and like the agency you get with just running like not on a treadmill but you know out in out in the world yeah running on a treadmill is so boring so boring if anyone out there is doing cardio and you know cardio workouts on treadmills just get just get outside yeah. Because it's so liberating being like, which road shall I go down? You know, um, Use the gym for the weights. That's what I, I yeah. think. Yeah. Weights in the gym yeah. and then run outside. Yeah. yeah. Inhale that, that fresh London air. <laughs> Take um. seven years off your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And if you run a marathon, have a song to cross the finish line to. Yes. What was yours? It was the new single from Oh Wonder. <laughs> Available out, now. Out July 14th. New album, what? <laughs> um, oh, I've got this one. I can't remember now. I once, uh, by accident, crossed the finish line. I think it was my first ever half marathon in Cardiff, listening to Los Campesinos, right as Yumi Dancing came on. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you're familiar with that song, yeah, but it's got yeah. like a really epic build up. Mm. And I was running up to the finish line, it was like, <laughs> and I was like, na, 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 yeah. na, na, na. it was so good. <laughs> oh, I think I even had something like really epic, like Hoppy Polar by Sigur Ross, like oh, scheduled oh, on the so iPod. Epic. So good. That would actually be good running music, just constantly. Yeah. Sigur Ross. I'm a fan of a podcast when I run. Did that the first time this week. So distracting, it's brilliant. Yeah, because you forget you're running. Yeah. I blinked oh, and I was like, good? oh, I've run, been running for an hour. How did that happen? S-Town, listen to it yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I've just thought, I sincerely hope no one has, has looked at the, the, the um, subjects of this podcast and gone, oh, running, I'll listen to that on my run because you're probably <laughs> in floods of tears right now I'm being like... desperate for a poo. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't talked about running. <laughs> Maybe we should change the subject. To poo. Poo, bodily functions. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you go? That can be the, ta- the, the tagline. There right. you go. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> it's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for having oh, us. it's been wonderful. You are not ah. the first. I mean, you are no, the no, first. No. Sorry. You are the first oh. to say that. <laughs> oh. D- sorry. It's, <laughs> it's been done before. Oh, no. No, it hasn't. No one's ever said that. They have. They haven't. It's been taken. Have a wonderful (laughs) evening, everyone. Yeah. It's not even a pun. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks to Josephine and Big Tone. You've been listening to Talk the Line, original music by Seams. Subscribe for more. We put a new one up every Friday. Follow us on Twitter at Talk the Line. And if you like us, please leave us a review. It really does help. A special hello to any Bastille fans who came back for a second listen. Thanks for getting us in the podcast chart, guys. See you next week.